what's going on guys so a question I get asked fairly often is you know what is my diet like what's my nutrition like and these full day of eating videos seem to be popular on YouTube for you know whatever reason I guess people just like to watch other people eat food but I figured it'd be easier to show you guys now this isn't going to be a regular thing I know there's some channels that have you know hundreds of episodes of full days of eating but really my diet doesn't change enough for me to do that I pretty much eat the same thing every day but since I've been cutting I have structured my diet a little differently and it has really been a good change you know I'm feeling a lot less hungry on 2500 calories than I was at 3300 calories which is you know obviously odd you should be hungrier when you're dieting but I've been feeling a lot more full my workouts haven't taken any hit at all despite being on a calorie deficit so I figured I'd kind of share with you guys what I'm doing now a lot of people you know say that macros are the only thing that matters you know when it comes to your body composition but in my opinion that's a little short-sighted now I will say calories and macros are the most important but there are other things that can affect it Typically, you know, when people list the effectiveness of different, you know, attributes of a diet, meal timing is pretty far down the list as not important or nutrient timing when you eat certain, you know, carbs, fats, proteins. But, you know, for overall body composition, nutrient timing doesn't really matter. But as far as performance in the gym, it can make a big difference. So just, you know, if you eat a big four pound, you know, chimichanga, right before you go to the gym, your performance is gonna suffer. You might end up throwing up. Same goes with the opposite. If you don't eat for hours before, you're not gonna have any energy. And so, I've been playing with a couple different things as far as nutrient timing that have really been working well for me. So, I'll show you guys some clips on the screen now. So, to go along with what I was saying, nutrient timing might not directly affect your body composition. But if you're increasing your performance in the gym, then that can translate into you know changing your body. So if you're going in there and you're you know able to work at your full capacity, you're going to do a lot more you know good for yourself in the gym. Then it's going to translate to results. So the way I've been structuring my diet on this cut is really nothing new. Basically, I'm just keeping all my carbs around my workout which means my first meal of the day, which you're watching now, is just protein and fat. Zero carbs except for, you know, the three carbs that are in the protein powder. And so what this allows me to do is, you know, typically when you're dieting, you're on lower carbs than normal throughout the entire day. Well, what this is allowing me to do is be on, you know, low carbs in the morning, but then the time, you know, before, during, and after my workout, I'm on essentially high carbs you know basically no change from when I'm bulking so that allows me to keep my performance high use or eat the carbs when my body needs them the most and is going to be able to use them so I don't really have a set number of meals but typically I have breakfast which is just protein and fat then I have a pre-workout meal which is just carbs and protein then I have some sort of intra workout carbs normally candy then post-workout, it's protein and carbs again. And then based on whatever calories I have left throughout the rest of the day, typically it's just protein and fat once again. So what I've been having for breakfast is just coffee with protein powder and coconut oil in it. Now I know it's become a fad to put you know coconut oil in coffee. Honestly, I'm not doing it for any sort of fad you know purposes, but really just because it's just fat with no carbs. So for my second pre-workout meal, I like to keep it higher carbs, high protein, low fat. So I'm having chicken and oatmeal with uh, some of this reduced sugar ketchup, which by the way, tastes great and mustard on the chicken. And this is about two hours pre-workout. Uh, still got a little bed head going on. I'm still on my pajamas, just been working on editing videos all morning so really no reason to put on any clothes but as far as oatmeal goes this is the best recipe that I found as far as you know calories to taste ratio really it's adding no extra calories 
all you're doing is having the calories from the actual oatmeal, but it tastes great. So really all we're gonna do is add some of this, I can't believe it's not butter spray if the camera will focus, and two packs of Splenda. And the key with that is to not stir it up at all because once you stir it up, it kind of dilutes the taste and you just really can't taste it that much. So just leave it how it is, eat it, and then if you have you know, some underneath, then just respray the butter and put more on. But typically that's good enough for me. All right, so I'm on the way to the, my, I was gonna say I'm on the way to the gym, but actually I'm on my way to GNC. And typically I don't like going to GNC just because it's really overpriced and you know, the people that work there typically you know just won't let you shop they just kind of jump all over you but I ran out of pre-workout I ordered some more uh, but it's you know it takes a couple days to get here so I'm gonna see if they can give me some sort of like just free sample or maybe find some sort of like 10 serving trial tub just so I can use that until you know my shipment comes All right, we're back, and they did not have any free samples at all. I think they uh, saw through my ruse. You know, I was like, eh, well, if you can just give me a couple packets, or, or if you have any you know, sample packets, I could try. You know, I'm trying to, I want to try a new pre-workout, but I don't want to buy a full tub in case I don't like it. They said they didn't have any, um, so I ended up trying this C4, or I bought the C4 ripped. Now. It's like brand new. Um, it's supposed to be their, you know, like thermogenic formula. Now I understand, obviously, that it's not actually really going to do too much as far as, you know, upping your metabolism. But I figured it's going to have some different slash some more stimulants in it. And C4 is pretty weak, so if it does have any more, you know, energy benefit, then that might be a good thing. But I'll try it out during my workout today and let you guys know. I've been mixing, I've been sipping Since I've been 20 on that lean, baby girl I've been popping and I've been rolling Since I was 17, I've been geeking on that water I want you, na na So as I kind of expected, the C4 ripped just pretty much was just C4. I mean, I guess they just put one or two extra ingredients. It just felt the exact same. But on to the next, you know, quote, meal, which is my intra-workout carbs. Today I had a Starburst, although I probably won't have these again because they have like two grams of fat, and I try to keep the fat during workout to zero. It just makes sense to me. And I, I try to have just carbs. All right guys, so I just got back from the gym and I pretty much have the same thing every single day after the workout. Normally I have some sort of ice cream, normally like a healthier ice cream. You'll see it on the screen now. Some like frozen fruit or some other carb source and then a you know lean or protein source like chicken or you know a protein shake or something like that. But I like to, like I said earlier, I like to keep all my carbs around my workout. So high carb meal before, carbs during and then some carbs afterwards keeping all of those meals low fat as well so just carbs and protein pretty much so I've been really into eating like frozen fruit lately I'm not sure why I guess it's good you know a good way to get in your micronutrients but it's also it takes a long time to eat so if you're dieting you know if you eat something like in like five seconds then you're still kind of hungry, but like eating the frozen fruit, you only eat like one at a time because it's hard to chew. So it takes like 15 minutes and you get a lot of volume for not that many calories. That whole bowl was 300 calories, which is higher than some of them. I got, before I was doing like a berry blend from Walmart, which is like 80 calories a serving instead of 100. But it's good, it tastes like, you know, one of those fruit bars, except, you know, it's actual fruit, but it's frozen, so. 
Give it a try. So the last thing to top off this meal was some chicken breast with some of this Kroger brand spicy garlic wing sauce, which by the way is amazing. And it's only like 15 calories per serving. And I only used one serving for, it was like six ounces of chicken. So really, I mean, all you need is one serving, 15 calories. It tastes like the Buffalo Wild Wing sauce. So I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm exhausted from that workout, but we're on meal number five now. Now I don't really, you know, I don't have a set number of meals. I have my set macros and then just, you know, I eat whenever I feel like it. So I'll show you guys what meal number five is looking like. I've got a spinach and chicken salad with the uh, sugar-free ketchup and mustard on top, some broccoli, and then an almond butter sandwich. So this is really what, you know, flexible dieting, if it fits your macro, should look like. You know, eating plenty of, you know, micronutrient-rich foods, but then, you know, occasionally having something like, you know, ice cream that you saw earlier. But I think I'm going to eat this while I watch Entourage. I think I got like a season left of that. Need to finish it before the movie comes out so I'll know what's going on. So final meal, got kind of lazy with it. Uh, this isn't really indicative of what my meals normally look like because this meal actually did have carbs in it, which typically my last meal doesn't. But basically, just a protein shake. I put it in the blender with ice. That way it actually tastes more like a milkshake. And it also increases the volume quite a bit. So it fills you up more, tastes more like actual ice cream milkshake. Overall, it's a lot better. I highly recommend doing it. And of course, it's just ice, so it doesn't add any calories. And as you saw, I used cashew milk, which by the way, is much better than almond milk. Almond milk kind of has a aftertaste, and the cashew milk does not at all. It also has like five fewer calories, if that even matters to you. It's pretty negligible, but in the long run, it might help out. And then I finished off with some carbs. I had two of these fruit bars. Now, like I said, typically I don't have any carbs in my last meal. Not for any of that, you know, hippie, you know, no carbs before bed, you know, type stuff, but just because I like to have my carbs around my workout. But that's the end of the video. If you guys want to see more of these or you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And also, you know, let me know in the comment section down below whether or not you like this type of video. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Have a great day.